There is an aspect of Wagner that we haven't discussed yet. That is to say, this morning we heard quite correctly of, of Wagner creating this work as a critique of capitalist society. And I think Michael made a very persuasive case that there is an ecological dimension to important aspects of this work. But we must not forget that when Wagner became a critic of capitalism and of bourgeois life, he attacked it in the name of a certain kind of primitivism and attacked it in the name of a cult of unreason and proposed to put in its place values and symbols that are, may not necessarily be the ones that we would want to live by. I mean, I'm not speaking here about the question of Wagner and prejudice and the Jews and all that, but leaving all that aside, just, you know, the, his, his fanatical belief in myth, his fanatical belief in origins, mm -hmm. his fanatical belief in archaism, his fanatical belief in the primitive, the, the, this was something that, you know, bourgeois society already in his time, but later in the early 20th century, a lot of German culture, they all, they all re rebelled against that. And what we have to ask ourselves is, when we offer a critique of capitalist life or bourgeois life or consumer life, shouldn't we do it rather in the name of a humane ideal of reason and not in the name of these turgid little creatures wandering around with their esoteric symbols that appeal only to the people who can understand them, et cetera, et cetera. There's something dangerous about this. Oh, I, I fundamentally, fundamentally agree, but not completely. Uh, I, I was also thinking when I first heard about this conference uh, that if I were to uh, think about current political and, and cultural crisis. Wagner is the very last person I would go to for advice what to do today. <laughs> and moreover, Wagner of the Ring is the very last Wagner, kind of Wagner. I, I, I would find more wisdom in Parsifal mm -hmm. and in almost all, but not all, of the Meisterzinger than in the Ring. I think Wagner of the Ring is the most radical, uh, most extreme uh, glorification of uh, one of the myths that have done tremendous harm uh, in modernity, the myth of revolution. And so I, I, this is the part where I probably depart mm -hmm. a little bit from, uh, uh, from you. He wants to replace the rule of Wotan with the rule of love. That we are returning to this, to the, to this subject. This is, this is the ultimate proposal. The new humans, uh, Siegfried and, and, and Brunhilde, are there uh, to replace Wotan, to replace the rule of, uh, uh, of, of laws engraved on Wotan's spear. Uh, you know, love is a wonderful virtue. Maybe Paul is right that it is the greatest virtue of them all, but it is not the only virtue. Mm -hmm. we, we need other virtues too, and one of them is called justice. Mm -hmm. And especially when you want to think about society as a whole, love is probably not the virtue you would reach for. You know, love is very good in regulating or, or directing relations between individuals. It's wonderful in keeping families together. But the society as a whole should not be kept together by love. It, mm -hmm. should, be, it should be kept mm -hmm. together by law. And I would much rather live in the, in the world ruled by Wotan than the world mm -hmm. ruled, by, uh, ruled by Siegfried and Brunhilde. Wagner did not stop with the ring. The ring, in its essentials, uh, in its ideological impact, is the work of the mid-19th century. By, nine, by 1850, uh, 1852, the ring is set. Uh, it is only the music which remains to be written. I agree with you, music is tremendously important. But the ideological uh, significance of the ring is stopped in, in 1852. But Wagner went further. Something happened to him in 54. He read, for the first time, Schopenhauer. And he read it at the moment when he, for the first time, stops believing in revolution. You know, until uh, about uh, early 54, he still hopes that there will be a pan-European revolution which will completely change everything. 
He now is disappointed, and of course Schopenhauer comes extremely handy as an explanation for his disappointment. He creates Tristan and Isolde, and suddenly it turns out that this love, which he was uh, glorifying in the ring, and which was supposed to provide the glue for the society, the basis on which to build a new society, is not something on which you can build a society. I mean, the, the kind of uh, picture of, of, of love that Tristan is presenting is, is uh, ex it's an extremely cruel diet. Uh, and diet. problematic, yeah. Problematic, yeah. cruel, nihilistic, Suicidal. and so on. So there is, this is of course another very great work, I think much greater than, than The Ring, uh, but he is left at this point uh, with the question, so what, what will I do with my social vision? And I think the Meisterzinger is an attempt to, to save, to salvage something of this optimism of the ring with the wisdom uh, gained uh, uh, by in, in the process of writing, writing Tristan. And I think he has very, very important things to say in the Meisterzinger. There is a certain vision of uh, necessity of combining tradition with innovation, he, he understands that innovation without rooting in the tradition is completely sterile avant-gardism, and he understands that tradition which is not uh, uh, enlivened with innovation is, is uh, sterile too. Unfortunately, in the last scene, he destroys it all by creating uh, a vision of uh, very frightening uh, uh, post-political <laughs> politics. So or maybe, the, maybe that last scene is prophetic, that unfortunately, even with all the fantastic awareness that you have going on through Meistersinger mm -hmm. at the end, it can all be spoiled yes. uh, by, by totalitarian, cultural totalitarianism. And maybe that is an interesting legacy that he leaves behind. That terrible last scene is actually very real particularly today. Yes. So in that respect, mm -hmm. I think it's not necessarily, you can today look at the work in that way. It's a prophetic piece. It is undoubtedly prophetic, uh, but he likes it. He likes it. You know, he likes if, it. If, yeah, if, right. if, if he didn't like <laughs> it, I would like the, it better. In the, it, we have, we have <laughs> the possibility right. in, 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 in modern times to uh, thankfully not put on the works with the original sets and the original costumes we can have a point of view in restaging them, in speaking to an audience and, and, and putting the work through a, a new lens, the lens of the 21st century. It's possible to cope with that scene in that light, but it depends on the production. But I think it's, uh, it's, it's interesting that that so-called accident of the last act of Meistersinger is actually so painfully real. <laughs> <laughs>